on the eastern edge of the Oregon State campus in a nondescript building next to a dairy barn. The future of eco-friendly construction is taking shape. This will be a foundation beam. That's Mark Garrick. Coming south this way. A lab technician at the Emerson Advanced Wood Products Lab at OSU. This beam will be cut to a very specific length. The lab specializes in the design, manufacture, and structural testing of mass timber. Now, if you've never heard of mass timber, in its simplest form, it's basically just a lot of small pieces of wood glued together. But there are a bunch of different kinds. So this is a glue lamb. It's made with like two by sixes that are finger jointed on the ends and then glued uh, at a factory to make a structural beam. And they custom make these according to your structural needs. Aside from glue lambs, there's LVL or laminated veneer lumber. There's also CLT or cross laminated timber, which is usually made up of two by sixes. And there's MPP or mass plywood panels. Mass ply is uh, plywood glued in layers. Instead of using two by sixes, they start with structural plywood and glue it in one inch, one inch increments uh, to make a structural panel. And that's what our building is made out of here. I mean, isn't plywood just essentially layers of wood glued together already? It is indeed. It's <laughs> just very large. It's macro plywood. <laughs> to create and test all those different kinds of mass timber, Gehrig oversees a lot of impressive machinery. There's a CNC machine, which can cut and drill and shape and carve pieces of timber into just about any shape. There we are. You can see the beam is modeled to length, and then the whole pattern that we're machining into it is, is there. There's a giant planer. We mainly use this to plane two by sixes. Used to prep the wood before the pieces are glued together. One of the important factors to uh, making CLT is getting uh, like fresh surfaces with the same moisture content. And there's a massive press. This is called a cold press. For gluing whole panels. We can make glue lamb with it. We can make full CLT panels with it. That's that machine. Cool. There's also a robotic arm. This is your most futuristic looking machine. It absolutely is. Uh, this is the one where everybody oozes and awes. Like you might see on an industrial assembly line. Can you make it move around for us? I can make it move around <laughs> for you. And that's only half the lab. So this is the uh, structural testing bay of our Emerson Advanced Wood Products Lab. And so um, here we look at the performance of wood products that are going to go into buildings. But yeah, and, That's you know, Ian McDonald, director of the facility. And from here on over, we have this four and a half foot thick concrete slab with all these reinforced anchor points in them. And then we've got a similar pattern on the wall there, which is also about four feet thick. Engineers can bolt their creations to the floor or wall so that they can simulate real-world stresses like a roof loaded with snow, a windstorm, or an earthquake. Yeah, so what we're seeing here is these are the hydraulic actuators that are used to exert the forces to simulate uh, either earthquake motions or uh, just gravity motions. The lab is big enough that they recently built a full three-story structure. Then they covered it in sensors and started pushing on it using the actuators, which can produce up to 600,000 pounds of pressure. The results tell the engineers whether the test structures can stand up to the forces they would encounter out in the real world. Sometimes it's a whole building that we've erected in here. Uh, we have the, the space to do that in here. Uh, sometimes it's just an element, you know, like a floor panel or a wall or a corner section. Now, mass timber has been around for a while, but it's got new life recently as builders and engineers have looked for greener alternatives to traditional building materials like steel and concrete. And you might not know a mass timber building just from looking at it. There are several around Portland that look a lot like their concrete and steel counterparts. But making concrete and steel produces a ton of carbon dioxide. And after water, concrete is the most consumed material on the planet. As the human population grows... There's, I think, the equivalent of a city the size of New York going up every month in the world. You know, that's the level of urbanization we're facing. And the effects of climate change come into sharper focus Mass timber offers some stark advantages. Wood is a renewable material, right? So uh, solar energy is what, how trees grow. Um, so uh, that's, uh, there's obviously um, a, an energy cost when you take the fiber out of the forest and you process it into lumber or veneer or then eventually into mass timber or something like that. But when you compare it to the energy required to produce steel or the energy required to, to produce cement and concrete, um, it's, it's greatly lower. It is still an emerging technology, though, and McDonald says it still faces some hurdles. Architects and engineers 
are not used to working with these materials necessarily as much as they're used to working with concrete and steel. So there's an education process there. You know, developers need to know that they can build these for a similar cost to uh, concrete and steel buildings. We're seeing that that happens now. But with that being said, McDonald is confident our region is poised to be on the leading edge. As early adopters of this technology in the Pacific Northwest, Washington and Oregon are really poised to kind of uh, achieve a global leadership position. And we're actually working on plans to, uh, to get to that point. You know, within 10 years, we have aspirations to be the kind of world competitive region for uh, mass timber manufacturing and design and construction. Kale's with me now. What a super interesting story. And I know that you're a woodworker. That must have been fascinating for you. Yeah, no, I don't want to get carried away. I'm a very, very much of a hobby woodworker. I make cutting boards and little tables, but I have much smaller versions of a lot of those tools at my house. So to see them on that grand of a yeah. scale, the, the gee whiz factor was out of control. <laughs> Just giant land, right? Oh, yeah. man, I was wandering around like a little kid, I got I to gotta say. Good for you. All right. And one part of my brain is saying, well, this mass timber or mass lumber is going to take mass timber. Doesn't that also impact carbon footprints? It's true. The trees are a big carbon sink, but you have to put it in comparison to what it takes to manufacture concrete and steel. Now, it takes a lot of heat to make concrete. You know, you got to get those things really hot, which takes fossil fuels to do. And then the process of making concrete also releases carbon dioxide of its own. Okay. And then finally, how big can these things be built? Well, U.S. codes currently allow them to be up to 18 stories. And wow. You know, McDonald, the director, he told me that the sweet spot is really between six stories and 12 stories. You go any lower than that, and it's hard to be competitive with traditional framing. You get higher than that, you get into some pretty tr tricky engineering problems. Wow, fascinating stuff. Thank you, Kale Williams. Go Beavs, they're always doing something fascinating. <laughs>